And uh, anybody wants to share their homework uh, for 2.9? I did this one, but how to share? Uh, do you have a copy on your machine or uh, how did you create that? Is it uh, on piece of paper? Uh, no, no, I did it on Azure DevOps. Oh, okay. Um, do you have the scenarios uh, first? Um, scenarios uh, or you just created test cases, uh, different uh, test cases? No, uh, uh, yeah, I wrote that uh, password okay. one. Okay, so if you if you log into the Azure DevOps, right, uh, you can mm -hmm. pull up the requirement, uh, and uh, you should have all the test cases, these uh, different various uh, scenario, uh, basically test cases tied to that uh, user story, right? Yes. Even though you might have written one detailed test case, which is fine. Mm. Yeah, so I have to go to Azure DevOps. Yep, yep, you need to log into the DevOps um, and uh, share the screen afterwards. Oh, I go. Hmm. Now, anybody has drawn on piece of paper um, scenarios? Yes. Okay, uh, do you want to share what you have? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here and give you the permission to share. Can anyone see my screen? Yes, certainly. It, it is there. I can see it. Uh, I'm not sure about other folks, but I think they should be able to see it. Okay, so this one is for uh, first one for creating password. Okay. So I made it create password uh, uh, and can't create password. Uh, create password means we have valid data. Must be eight characters, at least one upper case and one special character. Can't create means less than eight characters, did not use uppercase and did not use uh, special characters. Okay, so you have total four scenarios here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So valid is uh, with the eight character, at least one uppercase, at least one special uh, character. Um, okay. And the invalid data one is uh, eight, less than eight. Is it just less than or not equal to eight? What if it's uh, greater than eight? Would it be a negative um, as well? Yeah, but at the time I didn't think about it, but yes, it's my possible. Okay. Then you did not have one uppercase. So <clears throat> again, within one, one uppercase, right? Um, so uh, you are saying it's an eight character with O, but it does not have uppercase. Is, is that, I'm th that's what I guess I'm thinking. Well, that's what you mean? The first one says like for the invalidator is like less than eight characters means they have used uppercase or uh, did not use the special, use the special characters, but the total of the characters are not eight. Okay. It might what be about like the second seven one? or six. The second okay. one is like uh, that they have eight characters. They have used um, special characters, but they did not use the uppercase. Okay, so you just want to spell that out uh, when you write the uh, test case, right? Detail one. Okay. Say what exact scenario it is. Uh, did not use uppercase for eight character password with mm -hmm. one, one, at least one special character or one special character. Okay. Right, so because those, those makes it but uh, uppercase makes it invalid uh, if, they, if they don't use uppercase. Okay. So you want to spell that out basically. What are condition you are testing with? Okay. okay. Now, we, again, same thing applies to the special character, right? Yes. Um, do, you, do, you have, do you have a no data type of thing? Um, invalid one. So that's something you can certainly add as well. 
uh, without entering any password yes. am i able to uh, do anything right yes yeah the, so the other greater scenario greater than, yeah go ahead Dil. yeah i think it's uh, Herschel. you're getting that greater than eight character is not in here right so you need to right. identify that aspect also yep yep so that uh, five negative scenarios uh, in this case at least five you can think of more i mean uh, does anybody think of more anything else yeah also think of this one can you combine some of this things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right like it's kind of going into it right so like it's you have created the tree from the positive and the negative test case right or you can simply start with what is the length of the password right Eight characters, less than eight characters, greater than eight character. And then anything which is equal to eight characters, you can just say, say, hey, check it if it has uppercase, yes. Does it have a special character, right? So you can combine those conditions to reduce the overall number of test cases, but still cover the entire scenarios. So I included a criteria which has like more than uh, eight char characters, but it has one uppercase and lowercase. Special character, sorry. One uppercase and a special character. Right, that's the what I was talking about, Deepa, right? You can yeah. combine those things. Yeah. If it's uh -huh. eight characters to make sure does both of those condition are true, if so, then yeah. you're good, right? If it, it's not true, then by default, it is kind of yeah. negative. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yep. So on this one, like like you suggested, you go with less than eight, greater than eight, equal to eight, right? So mm -hmm. you're using the uh, smallest possible combinations, right? That's how you are starting and then you are breaking it. Yeah. Okay. There is one another one test case without any data, without password. No, nothing yeah. is given. That's no data. Yeah. Yep, but it, it it should be one, two, three, four, five, and at least six test cases, right? Uh, no matter how you come up with it, uh, but you should have at least six test cases on uh, on this one. Okay. Um, anybody want to share the detailed test case? At least one detailed test case for this one. Yeah, can I share it? Shubhaji. Yes, go ahead, Subhajit. Yeah. Can you see it? Um, I see yes. the tree, Subhangi. Um, okay. Is it what you wanted to share or you wanted to go to the uh, detailed test case? Oh, detailed test case. Okay, I can show you the detailed case, test case. So yes. I did, I did, <clears throat> I added a detailed test case for if the password uh, have eight character and one okay. special one uppercase and no uh, special character. Okay. Mm. So this, are you able to see it? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. So first we'll go to uh, type in the URL and uh, our front homepage will display. Then the site, okay. admin, site admin will log in, site admin page will open. As this manager. So, um, give me a second here. Uh, this is you are logging in as a site administrator. Okay. Mm -hmm. for, for this one. Okay. Um, then as this manage. Right. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, then access manage user section, manage user section, uh, manage user page will open. Then okay. uh, click on create new user button and create a lender user. By I created a lender user for this case. Sure. And sure. then um, entered all the information and password okay. as um, 
for the password, I use one uppercase that is capital S, and okay. uh, I didn't use any special character. And then, okay. the, but then also the system accepted the password. So it's um, system should accept okay. or should not? Uh, sh system should not accept, okay. but um, um, the, in the results, when I run the test, it was accepting accepting that password. Yeah, don't worry about the result, right? Uh, let's see uh -huh. what, what you have written down in the test case. Um, yeah, so yeah. your expectation is, right? You should, uh -huh. system should uh, accept the password and lender user is not created and so use the error message or something like that. Yeah, is so that I correct, added right? the expected result as system should not accept the password and lender user is not created. Yeah, but okay. uh, yeah, uh, Shubhangi, like it's, I think as Harshal pointed it out, right? How okay. do you know the user is not created, right? It's typically an error message is displayed, right? Uh -huh. so you want to add that as part of your expected results. Okay. Because you put the two condition that, hey, system is rejected the password and the lender user is not created. But mm -hmm. then it also gives you an error message, which lets you know that, hey, I couldn't create because your password didn't match. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Didn't fulfill the rules. So, okay. Yeah, correct. Rohini, you have a question? No, I, I was about to share, so <laughs> that... Yes, go ahead and share, Rohini. Um, for the same uh, scenario... Oh, you have the same scenario? Okay. Same, same uh, user story, I Oh, okay, okay. Same user um, story. Same yep, manage ahead, users. Mm -hmm. um, so I have uh, my... We can see your screen. Okay, uh, let's see. Can, can you see my screen? No, no I don't think you're sharing. Yep. So I'm going to share my screen. So I'm going to switch to my Azure. Okay. okay. So can you see my Azure? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, we can. So I'm going to boards. This I haven't figured like. Yeah, practice. I mean, it, 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 all, all you have to so, do is go to the boards. Uh, boards. No, you have to go to the boards again. The, the one about backlog. No, no, no. The one about the backlog. Just about the backlog, you will see the boards, right? Work items, yeah. boards, backlog. Those three items. So you go to the boards again. No, go to the boards yeah. again. Boards yep. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Okay. So here I created it with the area manager user. Okay. Um, Which requirement you tie to? That's that's the only thing. Area manager creating. Uh, hold on a minute. I know, but your requirement is a password one, right? The story should be created yes. as a yes. password, yeah. right? Mm hmm. Maybe so you scroll down, uh, you have additional test cases, um, user yeah. stories. Got stuck like for some reason, it's not like I raised the bug as well. A there you go, you see. <clears throat> Third one. Yeah, yeah or second one. Yep. Uh, yep. Manager creating password less than, and then I have another test case. Okay, let me show you. This is the one that I raised the bug. So okay. in the precondition, the valid, valid area manager uh, user should exist. Okay. So, and then uh, I type in the URL in the browser. Okay. Oh, the T missing there. And sure. uh, the user ID uh, of the area manager that I created, with user okay. ID and password, I'm logging into the system. So, the system uh, takes the manager to uh, the home screen, home page of the area manager and click on manage users button. Okay. Home page. System is going to take him to uh, the man user management page. So in the user management page, click on new button. So system shall uh, display the new user creation page in the browser and then type in here, uh, type in all the required valid dealer 
user data, there is little confused here. Okay. But the password here, all the data is valid, but the password, because we are talking about the password, I have password six digit, six character password, which is less than eight characters. Okay. So the expectation is system shall not, should display an error message. Password must be, must contain eight character, one uppercase and one special character. That's what. Okay. So the text you yeah. do not know, right? Uh, because what exactly error message, if, 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 they, if they have a different error message, as long as the user is not created and the error message is displayed, I think uh, you can put that in the expected result. Now, oh, unless you know, you work with the developer and figure out uh, that's what mm -hmm. they are implementing, exact text message, then you can put the text, uh, that, that message over there. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, but it is not specified in the requirement. So it's up to the development team what message they want to show. So then I should say uh, system should not create a user, right? Like that's yes, and the error yeah. message is displayed. Okay, an appropriate error message. Should yeah, be yeah, yep, yep. So then um, I ran the test case. Mm -hmm. I think I click here on the, so let me go to the bug. Uh, or no, when you run it, right, uh, you following the steps and if it fails, you open a bug and then you yes. work through the process at that point. Mm -hmm. yep. So uh, when I ran this uh, test case, let mm -hmm. me show you. There are only two bucks that I raised. So if you scroll down, I think uh, there is a scroll bar. Should be scroll. Yeah, the somewhere. scroll down is like my screen is stuck here. Like I can't see. Oh, I see. I see. I, you you should reason, be able to yeah see the bug as well. Um, if you see that the thirty one, uh, well, I think you have a different bug tied to this. Uh, yeah, yeah, without no, this is this is another bug with the franchise. Okay. So the 40, first one, right? 32 number. So this is the bug. Yeah, 32 yeah. is the bug. So here it failed in the last step with the password. My, for some reason, okay, here. So what, what is your question, I guess, Rohini? I'm trying to... Get to your so question. I have the question with the bug, like with the severity and uh, okay. Not, um, my so it, it won't be here, right? When I raise the bug, I chose priority and severity, right? Like okay. so close the priority one. Okay. And uh, the severity is not critical, but it's high pre uh, high. That's what I chose. I don't know. I, that I, is correct. Yes, you, you, you should, uh, because it's a functionality bug, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you need to raise it as either, if you see critical meaning, you cannot do your test case without that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if something crashes, right? You need to mark it as a critical. If you are not able to enter, create a credit application, uh, maybe because of some issue, that means you cannot execute your test cases. So you need to mark that bug as a critical. Now, this type of bug, it's a functionality is broken, but you are able to continue. So you can mark this bug as a high. If if uh, if this type of functionality is broken, you, you can mark it as a high or medium, okay? Depending on what functionality is broken. So you can put this as a high or medium, either one is fine, because it's not really preventing you to do the work. Uh, and so forth. So you can go medium, high, or high uh, as well, or medium, either one. Again, team will decide. They will look at it and yeah. say, okay, this is a high, this is something preventing the work. We cannot execute. Uh, the users are impacting or the testing is being impacted, so we have to fix it. They will They will look at from that standpoint. Okay, uh, can I ask you one question about like sure. preventing? Uh, so could you please be a little specific here? Like, see, uh, I'm not able to... Uh... So did anybody create a credit application? Anybody was able to create credit application? Anybody executed or wrote down the... Yes, I did point? the uh, run on the... Okay, did you execute it? 
I did not execute the test case. Like okay. I, and like I'm, I'm asking, did anybody executed a credit application test case? Yes, sir. I did, but Absolutely. it's giving a timeout. Uh, okay. It's throwing a timeout error. Right, right. So it's throwing a timeout error. So that means you cannot execute. The functionality is broken, sort of. You cannot. So you have to create a, open a critical bug for a mm -hmm. developer so that you can proceed with your testing. Without that, you cannot complete your testing if you are not able to submit the credit application. So yeah, that bug, you have to mark it as a critical. Uh, can I? Yeah, and then uh, you, you uh, can flow. But, sorry, sorry, you can go ahead. <laughs> no, just I was adding it to what Herschel was saying. It is like, it's when you flag it, right? That's when you will identify because it's critical because all of the functionality related to credit application, you cannot complete it, the testing for it. <laughs> Right, so that's okay, but remember that's we talked about the impact analysis, and that's where you add it up in there. Yeah, but uh, actually, when I uh, logged in as a lender, I was able to see a few applications which I created. Like, I I didn't know that it wasn't creating; it was throwing me an error. I thought it might be the um, browser is doing that, but. Uh, uh, later, when I logged in as a lender, I was able to see like three applications out of many what I created. That's still a bug, right? Because you thought it was yeah, not creating yeah. it, right? Yeah. So it may be giving you an error message that it's not created, but in the behind the scene, it was successfully creating it. That is also a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because then now you'll be creating a multiple ones. Correct. Yeah, that's what happened. Like I have created multiple. Right. The, yeah. to, to me, think of this way, right? That behavior, it is expected behavior or deviance from the expected behavior, right? It's not an expected behavior. It's a variation from where it is. And mm -hmm. since the expected behavior and what actually you saw didn't match it, it's a bug. Yes. Yes, Madhvi. Oh, I think I forgot to look at my hand because I think I had the same uh, situation wherein uh, uh, it was crashing, but then ultimately when I checked it, I did see uh, two uh, credit applications that I made that actually went through. Yeah, that, that's a classic scenario, right? That like it's, it's giving you false error message, even though the operation was successful and that's a problem. Okay. Oh. Can I ask you a question on this one? Uh, mm -hmm. So we are able to create the credit application. Uh, so would that be severity critical or like high? So if you created five, only two really got saved, three did not got saved or whatever happened. Do you think you can complete your testing? You can rely on the system to do further testing? I mean, you shouldn't, okay? So you should stop and basically raise a critical bug at that point because you don't know what the behavior would be, right? Because your other test cases are dependent on this bug uh, as well. Because if, if you are expecting, if you are executing the lender test cases and you are expecting to see five up items, applications, and you are seeing only two, that, that those test cases will start failing as well. Yeah, and think about it, right? It, it's truly inconsistent behavior, right? So you, if you use the same data and try to create over and over again, every time you don't know what results you're getting it, right? Looks like 40% of the time it's successful. The remaining 60% times it's failed. So you don't know when you create the next credit application, whether it's gonna be successful or failed. So as Herschel pointed out, that's a critical because I can never finish my testing because I, everything that I do at, at this point, it's guessed because it's kind of successful or not. Got it, thank you, it's clear now. Um, and then, I, yeah, go ahead, Margie. I just had a quick question. I mean, with re uh, regards to uh, uh, finding an error or a bug, uh, like in a different uh, requirement scenario where we were going to search the lender by either the partial name. Um, so it's uh, during our steps, uh, I did mention that uh, 
type in x y and then uh, the lender x y z name gets uh, displayed but when we go into the uh, lender management there is no search bar so in that case would that um, so how would you interpret if the search bar is not there because the moment the you click on um, lender management already the list is shown there is no searching in there now what about what if there are a thousand lenders in the system what it sounds like to me is your requirements call for a functionality mm -hmm. and your system that you have it does not have that right right so think of this way right you wanted a contractor to build your house they build it but forgot to build the kitchen would you accept it no so should you accept if the requirement says you should have a search capability and that it's no search capability so, so you can mark that as a high bug. Okay, it's not critical because it's not breaking any because there is no other functionality dependent on it. So okay. you have maybe three or five test cases you cannot execute, right? At that point related to the lender search. Right. So you can certainly mark it as a high and let the developer figure out how they can implement the search capability at that point. Okay, thank you. So I have another doubt like, uh, the credit application uh, how will you check the email of the lender what's the way so let, let us let, let us talk about that scenario here right uh -huh. so that i think we that's one of the homework item uh, we have so there are there are two additional uh, user stories or requirements <clears throat> that you guys were supposed to implement right so let, let us go through those and uh, i think you will get your answer Ipa, at that point So who wants to go, that, that gives us a good segue to um, the 2.6.5 submit credit application scenario, all right, requirement. So does anybody have written, written down like test uh, cases uh, or test scenarios tree for that? Yeah, I write a test case for that. Does, do you have the scenario or tree, tree uh, structure? Yeah, I have both of them. You have both of them. Uh, why don't you? Is anybody who else wants to share? Otherwise, say, uh, let Subangi mm -hmm. share. Okay, go ahead, Subangi. I guess um, other folks uh, not sure if they have completed. I don't have the tree, but I have the scenario written down. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see the tree first. It shouldn't be that bad. So, yep. Are you able to see? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm not sure I'm correct or not, but I write it like that. So lender gets email notification and another is lender doesn't get email notification. Um, okay. And if he doesn't get the email notification, it's because uh, while creating the lender, he is not providing the email ID of his email ID in that. Uh, does it matter? I mean, he provides his email ID or somebody's email ID. Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, again, yeah. those, those scenarios, right? Lender mm -hmm. gets it and lender doesn't get it. Are they any different? Or you are you are thinking uh, lender doesn't get it in what scenarios? So you have lender doesn't have the correct email ID specified and so forth. That's that's how your thinking looks like. Yeah, lender gets email notification when uh, um, email ID is provided. So so think of this way, right, Shubangi? Mm -hmm. it, this is where the the I would say the correctness of how the other requirements are come into play. Can you create a lender without providing an email address? Yes, we can. Is the email not required field? Yeah, uh, I created the first lender without email ID. And uh, for this test case, I created a lender for with her email ID. Okay, do, do you know who gets the email? Is it the lender as a company or the lender users? They are getting the email. When there's a uh, lender here, is it a company? or it's a lender user? A lender, a lender gets email, a company. 
So, uh, Shubhangi, do you have do, do you have the uh, requirements document or uh, design document handy? Yeah. Can you pull it up. Can you pull it up? I'm assuming that lender gets the lender company gets the email and then the lender lender is a login and then he checks for that email. Okay, so you are assuming again. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, now Navina has like one question. Looks like she has raised her hand. Um, Navina, you do you have a question? Um, I wanted to share my screen. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Let, let Let's just finish this one, right? So Shubangi, if you can just pull up your uh, de detailed design document, right? Because I, I think it's very important to understand it, right? Mm -hmm. So when you create the scenario, right? The first thing is, can you create a lender user without an email address? Mm -hmm. No, no, you're pulling the test case. What I'm saying is a requirements document. Oh, requirement document. Um... If it's handy, that's fine. If you don't have it handy, that's okay, right? So think of it, mm -hmm. right? A, can you create a lender without an email ID? And if so, is that a true functionality? Otherwise, it's going to break it, right? Because the whole notification functionality works it is that I have a lender associated with credit application, mm -hmm. right? And whenever that credit application gets created, based on that lender information, it automatically goes into the system, gets the email address and sends the notification, right? Mm -hmm. So if a lender is created, or if I'm able to create a lender without email address, okay. that is a bug right there in the lender creation itself, right? Yeah. So I would not try to like say it's, hey, there is a bug in the other part and that's why your test case becomes true. Mm -hmm. That's I would keep it simple as Herschel pointed it out, right? Essentially in this case, you mm -hmm. should just think about it. Whenever a credit application is submit, does lender get an email at the email which is associated with him or her in the system? If the answer is yes, the requirements passed. If the answer is no, it automatically takes care of your second scenario that they didn't get the email. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so Dilip, I think uh, the question here is, uh, her interpretation is uh, the lender as a company, they get an email. That's what uh, she is thinking. Yeah, but, uh, but like... the, 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 I think uh, the lender email is may or may not be required for the company when, when you are creating actual lender as a company like JP Morgan. Yeah. Okay. But the lender users who are working at that company, they all should be getting the emails. Um, that, that, that's the technically the how um, the, the flow in the system. For anybody, anybody receiving email, it's always the employees at the company. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there are two employees working for that lender, both should get an email. If there's only one, they should get an email. Now, if that's not clearly specified in the requirement, yes, I think that's an issue with the requirement. Right. Clarification. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so now let's, okay. yeah, you, ahead, Herschel, do you want to like step it through her steps? Because I'm interested to see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you go through my test so we'll understand yeah. yes, yes. What, yes. what's, what's yeah. going wrong? Yeah, and Navina, once we had gone through it, we'll, we'll come to you, see your screen. Sure. So here first, um, I mentioned, I created a lender, uh, nationwide loans, nationwide loans. Um, lender nationwide loans is present in the system with uh, I email ID, and I gave my personal ID here, and I really okay. check if I get the email or not. Okay, so here's the key thing, right? Mm -hmm. Here, instead of just saying personal, you should have explicit what is the email address. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, while running the test case, I write it, but after that, I just write it personal because I don't want to, to show you. Okay. But to, while running the test, I did it actually. Uh, write it my own email ID and did it. Sometimes what you do is you create dummy email. So Google is free, right? You yeah, go I was create one too. test account, right? One, yeah. one lender's email account, right? Right there. Mm -hmm. You can you can create as many dummy emails as you need, or okay. Hotmail or Outlook or whatever, just like what we did earlier, right? Yeah, 
I mean, after all the test is done, test running is done, I did it. I written here as a personal, but before that, before running the test, I write my own. Okay. Right. Yeah. But you and got the idea, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. In the browser, maybe go to the, then our flown page will open. After you are then um, type in dealer user ID and dealer user will log into the system. And then uh, he will uh, create a new credit application. And he will mention the lender while creating the credit application, the nationwide. And then expected reader should be the credit application is submitted and email notification is sent to the lender nationwide loans. And after. The... Go ahead. Now what is next step? Yeah. Um, that's it. Once here I stopped and then I run the test and I checked if. Uh, if I get the email notification or not on my personal uh, email ID after right. a submit credit application submission. So you should have a step that describes okay. what exactly you talked about, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's a verification portion. Yeah. Just yeah, because yeah. the system said it sent an email, mm -hmm. that doesn't finish it there, right? Yeah, Just correct. Just did you receive it or not, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the ooh, I think uh, yeah, that, that's a good point. So you need to have a step number six that says yeah. log into your personal email and verify that you received email mm -hmm. from the for for this for this credit application. Yeah, I will do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that part is uh, missing. Uh, looks oh, like. sorry, oh, sorry, you, you I, I sorry, yeah, <laughs> I read it. I'm it sorry. Uh, I read it. I checked the mentioned email ID of uh, lender nationwide loans for credit application. And then the expected result is lender received the email notification. Okay, you can just reword it because you are logging into your personal account. Yeah. Uh, or whatever personal email that you have specified and mm -hmm. see if you got an email, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, right? When, when you say mention email, are you yeah. referring to what you mentioned in step one? Yeah, in the step one. Okay. Now, actually, I was about, as it's my personal, I didn't want to mention here, but I was but, about to write my. Um, yeah. I mean, real so, email ID here only. Yeah. So as Harshal mentioned, right? If you create a dummy email address, mm -hmm. just make sure you explicitly say that, like, check the email address X Y Z, right? Whatever you created, mm -hmm. and then make sure it received a notification for the credit application that was just created, right? And whatever the ID that no. you used it in step five, yeah. that the system told you that it created that application, you should be able to see that. So yeah. it's not just creating new credit application, but it's about did I receive the notification with the new right application with the ID that was generated in step five? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah there generally, are some... it will include some information uh, related to the credit app. So, yep, an ID could be one of them. Yep. Okay. So there are some mistakes here. Uh, I mean, little bit mistakes. Uh, I have to mention the email ID proper, whatever I created. But apart from that, is this. Is this test case correct as per as the steps concern means steps? Yes, the steps yeah. are fine. Uh, looks looks logically correct. Uh, okay. I don't see any issue, right? Yeah. Only he, the details to, needs to be yes, there, right? Yes. Right. And as I said, right, Shubhangi, one check that you can do it yourself, right? Whether the steps are correct or not, just execute it. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Can you follow step-by-step -step instruction and do it? Or are you following something else on top of what it is? And if yeah, it is, then you need to go back and fix the test case. Yeah, true. Yeah, and then I. Okay. So I, I think it's good. Uh, you have the logically correct steps. Um, and uh, if you see variance, you can open a bug and defect and work through the process. At the yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see what Navina is. Navina, go ahead. Yes, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I have uh, two test cases added here, test scenarios, and both are. Uh, you know, it's uh, it did not go through. So one would be lender notified by email on successful uh, submission of credit application. 
uh, there I wrote open browser, type in the URL, and our flown application homepage is displayed. Then uh, we have uh, the site admin logs in with proper credentials, uh, uh, such as S training and password would be training. Login okay. uh, should be successful and uh, welcome Charles page is displayed because that was displayed that time. Then is um, navigate to lender management section and click on the new button uh, to add a new lender. Uh, lender management page uh, opens and new lender creation form opens up. Then okay. uh, uh, fill in the lender details, uh, name uh, and my initials, NC, address, I've given a dummy address, um, city, state, phone number and email ID. I've given my personal email ID and okay. active flag is true and click on it. Lender NC successfully created. Uh, then the site admin logs off from the Arflown application. Uh, site and uh, successfully logged out and Arflown uh, homepage is displayed. Then the dealer logs into Arflown application with login ID, G training, pass training, and uh, dealer is logged in and dealer homepage is displayed. Then navigate to enter app data, uh, enter application data to create new uh, credit application. Then the new credit application form ID is displayed. Uh, then uh, fill in the details for creating new credit application. So I've created credit application with all these uh, credentials, okay. with all these details. Um, right. And then uh, I've written expected result is credit application successfully create and submitted to lender uh, Chase Bank. Okay. Uh, yeah, an email notification is expected to the uh, to go to the lender upon successful submission. Uh, okay. So uh, after this, yeah, after this, uh, dealer logs off from Arflown application and dealer logged off successfully and Arflown homepage is displayed. But here, when you were going through Shubhangi's, I came that I haven't written that whether I've checked the email has come. Got, yes, uh, gotten yes. through or not yeah because that, that is that is the functionality part right so you miss yes. those couple of steps um, yes now as part of that you can uh, you can create a new email account or you have your some generally i mean testers uh, qas i mean they will have a bunch of uh, email accounts they will be created okay yes. for, for testing purpose for the email yes. account yes with simple login credentials and so forth and you can yeah. you can so you have to assign that email to when you are creating a lender. Yes. Right. Okay. And then you at the end, you log in to that email account, whatever mm -hmm. it is, Gmail or Hotmail, and you would see whether you mm -hmm. actually receive the email or not. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That, that's, that's what it will complete. If you receive it, that means, yep, functionality is working well. And lender yes. is notified of the successful credit application, basically submission. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So those couple of things, but otherwise your your test case is detailed. I think you have the steps, just a few things missing. Yeah. If you connect I'll, that, that that means it should be considered complete. Yeah, I'll add on to it. Yep. And then the other one is also similar, uh, but lender not notified by email on successful uh, submission. This one was lender uh, lender notified by email, and the other one is lender notified by email. See, if 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 the other one fails. That means yeah. you don't really need the second one here. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Right. Uh, because other one failed. That means, yeah, it's going to pass the second one. Yes. Yes. Got it. Right. If you don't get email, that, that means, yeah, your second test case will be true. Mm -hmm. The lender not supposed to receive email um, with whatever. Right. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a duplicate. Uh, I would I would I would think that way. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Now, I, I think one of you had uh, invalid email, right? Uh, that you specified. Now, if you have invalid email, I don't know how you're going to prove that you never receive email because it will never get to you. So you mm -hmm. can't really prove it, whether the system actually sent out any email or not. So you can't really, that scenario will not really work in the real life. So in this case, the branches of the tree will just be. Uh, yeah, just be one simple flow. I mean, as I said, I mean, this this could be simple flow. You are trying to verify the business flow here, uh, whether lender receives the email. If it doesn't, uh, that means your test case is failed. Right. 
Now there is a similar one. I think RFREP uh, for site admin, there is another functionality that might have multiple scenarios in there. I, I'm not sure whether you guys, uh, we did not give you that for the homework, but it's, that requirement is there where multiple folks supposed to receive email and that's where you can branch out. Hey, this guy received the email, but other guy did not uh, and so forth. Okay. Uh, I have one more uh, question. Like yes, for the email received, can't we have two branches saying that with content as per requirement and without any content, he, he would receive an email? So that would be the content user story. Here, we did not give you the actual, this would be the content of the email. Now, if you are verifying the content, mm -hmm. here all it says is whether it, whether lender received email or not. Now, if there is a second story or second requirement in the same section that, hey, the content should be this for the email. So that would be a separate requirement or story they will typically give you. Okay. okay, and you have to verify what what is the actual content. Hey, do do I get the same content in the email or not? Basically, okay. yep. Okay, thank you. But here they did not specify that requirement, so you are leaving up to the developers to basically implement the content. Okay. So everybody good? Uh, let me come back to our third requirement here. Herschel Roger has a hand raised. Oh, go ahead, Roger. I got a question back to the um, to the invalid email. Okay. So you know, I was looking at it in a context where, like, in real life or in real scenario, when you send an email, you know, like with a wrong email, and then it bounces back. Right, but remember here, the system is sending the email. Here, the system is sending the email, right? So there is no right. mailbox per se programmatically it's be, it is being sent. Even if it bounces, mm -hmm. uh, you may not even see that basically because there is no mailbox. It's generally you will see like a no reply type of mailboxes. Uh, I don't know whether you are getting email from your banking accounts or somebody. And you can see it that they will put a disclaimer. Hey, please do not respond to this type of emails because right, you will never right. receive it. Yeah, those type of emails uh, they will use, which are like a one-way type of emails. Okay. And generally system will use those type of emails. There is no mailbox. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. So anybody want to talk about the third requirement? Uh, manage dealer shops. Yes, Navina, go ahead. Navina or Roini, yep, I think both of you are raised in, uh, so which your one? Can I, yeah, can I sh can you sh uh, see my screen? Yes, yes, Navina. Yeah, uh, managed, okay, this is the one. Yeah, so I have, four test scenarios here. Uh, one, we uh, verify that the system generates franchise number based on two digit state code, two digit code for the county of, and uh, auto generated number from the input data. So this is, uh, uh, this is a positive scenario. And uh, here I've written, open the Can browser. Can you go back um, uh, yeah. and see what are the other scenarios you have? Uh, so this is yeah. a good scenario. You have all, everything you could. You yeah. have county, franchise number and everything. Okay, let's yeah. see what's the other one you have. The other one is verify that franchise number is not created when county is missing. Okay, so you are not supplying county and you are trying to save the dealer. 
um, yeah. and see if you are able to system generates the number. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, third third scenario is uh, verify that the franchise franchise number is not generated when state information is missing. Okay. And uh, the fourth one is uh, when all the data inputs like state county is missing. I see. So you have a one additional scenario. Um, okay. And you, you don't have a no data type of uh, scenario as well. Like nothing is supplied. Um, no, I haven't created made that. Maybe, maybe that's what it is, right? Yeah, no data uh, as in uh, not only just the county and the state, but no other fields, right? Nothing has been mentioned. Well, uh, uh, creating no, the... you can just uh, whatever is required for the franchise number. Okay, uh, you, you are not supplying that information, so it, I think, the last scenario will cover that. Yeah, that this is covered, right? This covers the no data part, then, right? Right, right. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So should I go ahead with the second one? Um, either one is fine. Yep, uh, maybe go with the right scenario, see what you have. Uh, I think other folks have questions. So go, let, let's see what, what questions you guys have. Just yeah. stay on the screen. Yeah, so in the first scenario where uh, all the, the required fields are entered, uh, here I've written, open the browser and enter the Arflown URL. Arflown homepage is displayed. Then log in as site administrator with a valid login and ID password. Uh, then site administrator logs in successfully. Na navigate to dealer management. Dealer management page, page is the site. Then is click on new button to create a new dealer shop and ARF, um, ARF dealer number. That is uh, basically ARF dealer number is the franchise number is what I mean by this. And okay. um, uh, uh, Expected result is dealer details page is displayed to enter dealer shop information. Uh, then is enter all the mandatory fields to generate the franchise number for the new dealer shop. Please input uh, the below field values, shop name, shop type, or uh, rep. Uh, this I had already created earlier in a VCH, like it's mine only. And, uh, uh, but did, did you mention that uh, our prep exists in the precondition? Oh no, I I okay. forgot to mention. Okay, so the you, you want to make yeah. sure that you have a precondition that uh, yes. that talks about that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then state county is mentioned. Email has been has been given, and check the active active checkbox and click on save. Then is uh, active result is franchise number uh, is generated based on dealers state, county, and unique sequence number. In this case, since there were already many dealers created for state uh, OH and county medicine, franchise number generated is OHMD 076. Uh, uh, how do you know the 076 supposed to be generated? No, because while I was generating, like, you know, uh, this is after it was generated, I checked. And then, so here I've okay. just given that, you know, 076 yes, had been yes. given. So I think uh, yeah. th there are a few things. Uh, when you are testing out, right? Because you are trusting the data in the right. system. Right. Uh, but in the ideal world, you should be specifying what is uh, what exists previously okay. into the system. Maybe there are 75 dealer mm -hmm. with uh, so MD0 up to 75, right? It exists. So you're expecting yeah. 076 by running this test. So you should clearly call that out in the precondition. Okay, got it. And your scenario description uh, should include that as well, uh, not just uh, verify that. Uh, I'm just trying to see where you can put that information. Yeah, precondition would be the best thing that okay. you have uh, up to 75. This combination uh, for for Maryland and OH, there are 75 mm -hmm. dealers that exist, and you are expecting 76. Basically, you have to clearly identify that specify specify in the precondition is it yes yes yeah okay that uh, there are 75 dealer already created for maryland and ohio or what is a md ohio yeah. uh yeah madison Z county ohio yeah okay okay right then only you can tell yep it's supposed to be 76 at that point okay got it and then we click on the uh, logout link in the application and user logs out from the application successfully in our phone, our phone homepage is displayed. So when I- But uh, do you need the step? I mean, uh, that particular step, uh, Navina? Uh, I mean, it's nothing to do with the functionality, right? It's just a logout. No, page. it's not. Yeah, I, I yeah, just- So you don't want to add any more steps. Your verification okay. would be 
the number five, you mm -hmm. are going to verify that number is generated properly and that at that point you are done. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. I think other folks, I think a few folks have raised their hand earlier. So Roini, Madhvi, yeah, uh, or I, uh, whoever. I, uh, yep. Actually, I had a quick question on Navina's case. Sure, sure. Go ahead, Madhvi. Yep. Um, I know Navina did mention that uh, in all the uh, fields that she was filling in, she filled in the shop type too, but that is not a required uh, data mentioned in the system design document because uh, I tried creating it without adding in the shop type. And then when I click, uh, then she says that shop type is required. But shop type on in the system design document, it's not uh, marked as a required uh, data. So would that be a bug in that case because it's not being uh, marked as a required? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a clarification point, right? Um, I mean, you can technically open a bug because it's not required and the system is forcing you. Okay. So you could technically have a bug created. And then developer will come back and say, oh, it was a design mistake or design fault or defect. Okay. And uh, then, then you just close out the bug at that point. Okay. Because for dealer, right? Uh, what type of uh, shop? Uh, you you said the shop type. Yes. Is that what it is? Yes. Right. So if it's not required, then they will say, yeah, it's not required. And they shouldn't be forcing you. Uh, I mean, if it's not mentioned, it's required. They shouldn't be implementing that. But is that a required field uh, on the screen? I'm not sure. Shop type. No, it's not a required. You see... Yes, and that's why when okay. I try uh, first create it without the shop type, and then I click uh, enter, it's then on the next screen it comes again that shop type is required. So it. Uh, oh, okay, so it gives you the error message, right? Okay, so you need to open a defect because clearly design says it's not required, and it says at that point the developer will come back and say, "Oh, we made a mistake," basically. Okay. Uh I would like to add on this. If you go to page 14 of 27 of your design document, mm -hmm. go to the entity dealers, shop okay. ID. It says, uh, we cannot hear you, Rohini. It's the dealer, like she is talking about the dealer required, right? Uh, she's creating a dealer, right? Uh, in yeah. this requirement, she's trying to create a new dealer. So there is a field called shop type. Okay. So that field is not required. That's what Madhvi is bringing up. But in the system, when they actually implemented it, it is forcing them to select a shop type. So it's a clearly a devi deviation from the design as well. So you can have a conversation with the developers and they might say, oh, it's a design defect. Um, and uh, so they, they correctly implemented or bring in the business as well at that point. And they will say yeah, no, it shouldn't be required or should be required because the requirement doesn't say that whether it's required or not, it's in the design. So it's, it's a more of a clarification with the business and the team. Um, and generally you will clarify. Those are minor fixes, minor changes, but again, it's a deviation from the uh, design. So it's a, it's a definitely a bug. Your job is to open a bug, let the folks figure out what's wrong with it. But I think it's there in the requirement documents, but it says uh, D, uh, it says uh, D name instead of- it's, No, it's a shop type is a different field. That's, so there are probably 50 fields for the dealer. Shop type is one of the field, I think. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Can I add an, another uh, step in that the dealer, uh, the site admin go back and search the dealer name and it displays the dealer with the franchisee number? Yes, how you want to verify it, right? I mean, uh, yes. so you can you can pull that up. Definitely the last step, number yeah, six. Yeah, that's what if I If you want oh. to go further. Now, uh -huh. instead of logging out. Yeah. Well, you can log out and then, uh, well, you are site match admin, right? You are logged in as a yeah. site administrator. So you don't need yeah. to log out. You just need to yeah. go back to a dealer search. Search, yeah. Yep. And search see if it's up. Yep. Yeah. 
I, I took yeah. a screenshot of it and I attached in the. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, I did. That's it. how you you should, you can add another step. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. I have a question on uh, the previous uh, test case. Uh, I mean, like the scenario. Email. Email. Okay. No, not the email. Um, the current one. Franchise number. Okay. Uh, so, um, because uh, she went with valid, right? Everything is good. Valid data, right? Like that's what Navi showed. Correct. Uh, she so she had four scenarios identified. Now you could have more because I can clearly see um, there yeah, could be more scenarios. Mine? Can I show mine where? Yes, uh, yes, go ahead. Share, it share. Is missing uh, and the county. And then I have a question on county with the design document, you know, like. Yes, go ahead and share. Can you see? Yep, we can see it. Just click the down arrow and it will show up all of the uh, test cases. Okay. Click, click on the number four. There you go. So in the precondition, uh, I'm logging in with the uh, R prep because, uh, and then. Uh, Oh, this I think uh, I'm on the wrong. Uh, wrong test case, I think. So in this case, you're saying like at least the description says, right? If you're missing yes. the, state, the state, you should not missing. be able to create it, right? Yes, the state is missing here in the data. Okay, let me walk you over. So I'm in the right one then. Okay, in the precondition, I'm logging in uh, with our prep uh, pri privileges okay. in the system. Uh, that user already exists in the system. Mm -hmm. And then I go to dealer management, our prep goes to dealer management, and then uh, clicks on add a new dealer. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in the, deal, uh, in the uh, dealer shop, uh, Dealer data, uh, our prep is going to enter all the- The address, right? So where is the address? Okay. Because that's where the information comes in. Yes. So, and then the dealer state is missing here. In the design document, dealer state is a mandatory field. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so you missed the state. Yeah, I chose the county, which is not a required field in the design document. State is a mandatory required field. And then uh, expected result. Okay. System shall display error message, missing dealer state, re uh, saying that missing dealer state, re-enter. That's the me message. Okay. I'm so, so, so I would put two things here, right? Mm -hmm. So in expected results, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Like, what is the first thing happened? You were not able to create the dealer shop, right? Yes. So that's when I would put it like it's system failed to create a dealer shop and an error message is displayed indicating that the dealer, uh, the state information is missing for the dealer. Okay. Right. So you're, 
expected the, the one condition is right, I would just add the other one also to be explicit that it fails to create the dealer shop. Okay. Yeah, and the one thing I would uh, clarify uh, in the uh, one more verification I would add is uh, franchise number is not generated, basically. Okay. Okay. Because okay. Uh, that's what ultimately your test case is about, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. You want to validate whether the franchise number is created or not. So just make it clear in number six, dealer is not created, error message displayed, and franchise number is also not generated. So, and um, when I executed this, okay, um, there is a bug, the dealer is uh, created with blank franchise number. There is no franchise number. There you go. So it's That's a bug, a, right? Uh, yeah, you identify, bug. fail the test case, right? Mm -hmm. And which step you would fail it? You would fail it on the step case where it was creating the dealer, right? That's what's an important thing, right? is getting all those three conditions and his expected results, it's an important. So here at the creation, right? Yep. Yeah. So if, the, as long as you have it, right? Five. Yeah, okay. so franchise number not generated as well, that you are clearly saying these three things in order to pass this, three things needs to happen. If one of them fails, you will fail the test case and uh, uh, you will create a defect for the developers. So then uh, I think I see my bug here. So what about the severity and priority? I, I, I would, uh, again, right? I would not worry too much about the severity in that because mm -hmm. remember, as I said, typically like it's wherever you work it or in your test plan documents, mm -hmm. th there are like it's um, criteria defined which will indicate how do you uh, assign the priority and the severity for a given bug. Yep. Right, you just follow those criteria. For you, th here the simplest thing is, did you create the bug, right? And then what is the impact of that bug? Uh, are you able to further proceed with the testing or it is gonna prevent you from even running the multiple test cases? If so, then just like it's gonna put it a high. So yep. it's subjective, right? So uh, it depends on uh, what stage we so are. So think of this way, right? So if you are failed to clear, create a dealer shop, right? Can mm -hmm. you create or test the functionality about creating a dealer user? I cannot, right? Can you, so if you fail to create dealer users, can you create credit applications? No. So think about it, right? Mm -hmm. How many other test cases you can't run it? Okay. So what will be impact to your work? You will be twiddling thumbs till they fix it and give it to you. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So isn't it high at that case? Yes. Okay. So Rohini, I see your hand raised. Yeah. I'm Still going... have a question? No, I'm just. Okay. Yeah, I think Rashmi, Deepa, Madhvi, they all Not have changing. some questions. Yeah. So go ahead, Rashmi. Yeah, I tried creating three uh, dealers in different counties like Union County, Franklin County and Logan County and the auto numbers were generated which generated were in sequential order. So I thought uh, the valid test case would uh, fail. I don't know whether like it is the right one because like. Well, what does requirement say? It says that if the, um, suppose the uh, Franklin, in the Franklin County, if the that is the first dealer, then it should be 001 and the second one should be 002. Right. But so it, when I it, go to Union County, it should be 001 and 002, but these give in a, <clears throat> in a sequential order. Okay, so when you do that, right? So what you're telling me that when you ran the test case, the numbers that generated were not according to the requirements that was specified, right? I think so because I don't know. Then what do you do? The database, like no, uh, again, whether... I would not. I would not worry about the implementation detail, mm -hmm. right? How it generates in database. The question is: Is the franchise number generated as per expected requirement? No. And if the answer is no, it's a bug. 
Okay. Yeah, your job is not to figure out what is wrong with it because mm -hmm. they have to dig up in the technical stuff. So all you can do, best you can do is uh, you open a defect and let developers figure out, debug through the code and they will they will figure it out. What is why it's uh, behaving differently. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, That's why yeah. it's a black box testing, okay? That's uh, why okay. I mean, uh, it is considered a black box. Okay. The, uh, the number, it says unique sequence number, right? So it can be anything like, so you need to run the test that. cases, right? I mean, so you need to test all these scenarios. Yeah, whether it, it creates a number. That's what we should worry about. Like it doesn't no, say no, anymore. No, 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 it's, it's not random number. Uh-huh, yeah. right? unique so, sequence number. It so, says so, unique. Right, but the sequence, that means one follows, two follows, three, and so on. Okay. That's called it's sequence, not gonna right? Jump, jump it's not random. Course. Yep. Okay. So other thing is in, in the system uh, design document, um, the county is not marked as required. So, so that again goes back to 3 CNT, right? Yes, yeah. If, if you don't provide county and then one of the other requirements says that, hey, the county is required in order to generate the franchise number. Yeah. You should have flagged it there as a 3 CNT failure, right? Okay, yeah. So I have to... Uh, like query the uh, BA or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just follow up and say, hey, this requirement is not consistent or complete. Uh huh. And we get a clarification around it. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Madhvi. Yes. Yeah, so actually, I have the same doubt about county being uh, a required field, but I think uh, that uh, question has been taken care of. So I also had another question regarding. Um, uh, the email notification after a, a credit application is submitted. So knowing that the email uh, notification, one doesn't get it, how do you take a screenshot and show that one is not getting it? I mean, do you, you would take a screenshot of what in this case? You don't have to take a screenshot of everything, right? As long as you identify what steps you followed it, Okay. that resulted in identification of the bug. And as long as you document that, the developer should be able to reproduce that in their environment. The intention okay. is to communicate the information, what steps you followed that resulted into the bug identification. Okay. So that they can reproduce the bug when they, so they, they, sometimes they don't, don't believe, right? So you, you tell them, hey, these are the steps. So they will actually execute the step one by one and they will see the behavior in the system. And if you document the steps properly, then they will they should be able to find out uh, why it failed and uh, what's wrong with it. So, and they, they should be able to correct afterwards. Okay. So it's just whenever it's possible, uh, upload the screenshot by it doesn't yes, mean yes. every... Yep, yep. Okay. That's correct. All right. Thank yep. you. Yes, Roini. So uh, going back to county, in the design document, it's not specified as a required field. That's what we said, right? It's a clarification. So you need to work with the business analyst to figure out wh whether it's a required or not, because it's clearly it needs to be required. They haven't marked is required. So you need to get to wait the, from the business at that point. And they will agree basically because if yeah. franchise number requires that field, then they will say yes. Please mark, make it required. Yeah. So the other way you can also interpret this, right, is the design document provided by the business, or it was created by development team, right? So you have to think about it. What is the requirements document specify? If there is a discrepancy between requirements document and design document. You should always rely on requirements document and not on the design document. Yep. Okay. So requirement document clearly says that, hey, it's a required field. They never say that it's not required field. It was the design document that essentially mismatched from the expectations. Right. So in this scenario, I would not go to the business. I would just go to the developer and say, hey, this is what it's expected, but you say that it's not required. 
you need to fix that. It's still a bug. Yep, yep. Definitely, it's, it's going to be a bug, regardless. Yep. Understood. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see what else we had. Any other question? Uh, I think that's all we had for the homework. So hopefully you guys all had a good practice with the Visual Studio, I mean, uh, DevOps as well, right? Azure DevOps. Um, and hopefully you understand the execution cycle with the DevOps and so forth. That was the goal for these exercises and uh, working to additional test cases and scenarios. Okay. Any question on anything uh, that you have? If not, we have some installation item we want to go over. I to had get a ready question. for weekends. Yep. Okay, yes, go address me. Um, actually in the Azure DevOps, I deleted a step in the past uh, test case uh -huh. and the system doesn't mark it for any retest or something like it doesn't show me anything like it, no, it says no, I it passed the uh, test uh, even though I deleted a test uh, even though I deleted a step it shows as uh, past test case yes because you deleted after the fact probably you executed that result is stored somewhere in the DevOps so or that step will not show up when you execute it again. So if you really want to rerun it, you have to execute the test again, and that's where you will not see the step. And that's where you will probably realize, hey, I missed the step, or I by mistake, I deleted something. System okay. does not do anything automatically. Okay. okay. Yeah, all, the, all, the, all these tools are like that. If you delete it, it's gone. It's not going to flag it, hey, mark it as uh, because something has changed. Uh, let's go and rerun the test. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Rohini, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, with the tool uh, DevOps, so uh, if I have a user story already written and test cases under it, uh -huh. can I delete it? Like, uh, I was struggling to do that the other day. Like uh, You have to remove it. So there is a status you can change and that will remove it. You cannot physically delete out. Okay. That's my design. Yep. There is a status oh. called removed. You can uh, remove it. Again, it's configured by the different, uh, by company. So depending on the company requirement, you will have different statuses for the story as well, which is okay. marked as a removed. Oh. So, yeah. And uh, w once you remove it, uh, it's gone. It, it will be in the backlog, but it will will not show up on the board. Okay. Uh, one more question I have with uh, user creation, like uh, lender user cannot be created by R for F, right? You tell, tell us, I mean, what do you see in the requirement? Because the first, uh, in the initial pages of the requirement, um, super user can create the lender like. Uh, okay. Not. So then. It's only super user, okay. Yeah. So the site admin, not the super user. I'm assuming both are the same. So then uh, on uh, the application, real application. Mm -hmm. So I could see the option for lender user as well. When Is I it a lender user or lender? It says lender, like, I mean, like, if I, if, if I go to user management, I should not see it, right? No, you, whoever has access to user management, they can create the users. Does it say like a r user and so then I, cannot create lender user? So if I, if I uh, go log in as an r uh -huh. I should not be able to create a lender user, right? No, you are assuming that. I think they not they shouldn't be able to create a lender, not the lender user. As long as they have access to the managed lender, they should be able to create any user. Oh, okay. Right. There is no granular level of uh, granular level of requirements that says RFLAP user cannot create lender user. 
but uh, yeah. Justin says it's all role based, right? So I'm assuming that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you you are misinterpreting the requirement. I think because yeah, it is a lender. It says a managed lender, and a managed lender is all about managing the lender company, not the users. Oh, okay, thank you. Right. So that module is all about uh, can I create a J.P. Morgan Chase as a lender? Now, manage users is about users, which can belong to dealer. Our app user, whatever kind of users. So it's a different different functionality. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. All right. So let's do one thing. I think uh, uh, I, I'm not sure you guys saw my email uh, for software download. Uh, but uh, hopefully you guys have those things downloaded on your machine. If you have a Mac, you uh, should be able to download this couple of software uh, for Mac. Now SQL Server clearly will not work on the Mac. Uh, so you unfortunately that doesn't work for the Mac, but uh, Postman and SOAP UI will work for the Mac, uh, Mac machine, Mac. So you will be fine for those. Uh, I, okay. use, uh, I think one or two. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Deepa. Yeah, I, I use my uh, work computer. Uh, I don't have privilege to download yeah, SQL Server. Yep, yep. Yeah, you probably will not have privilege to install anything then. Uh, yeah, but on your I, work computer. I could able to that Postman app and another SOAP. I, I could able okay. to download those things. All right. But the SQL, like the other two stuff. I couldn't. It's asking for admin <laughs> privileges. Yes, yes, yes. They will uh, not allow you to install anything generally on the work computer. Yeah. It is provided by company. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, I will I'll not mess to... around with that either. Yeah, I know. I'll try to get another computer by yeah, like when yeah. I come to class and I'll download. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So um, for me, I doesn't uh, allow me to uh, download the SQL, but other two I can able to download. Yes, yes. So I it's think not uh, Mac. You, it's not Mac. It's. Uh, I think you should be able to download SQL Server. Uh, there are two components to it. Uh, one is uh, Studio uh, Management Studio, and second one is a SQL Database Server or Database Engine, which is SQL Express. We okay. we will use it. Um, both I couldn't able to download today. I don't know. So both I couldn't able to download. It. Okay, so that that is fine. Uh, come on, uh, you are coming on Saturday, right? Uh, so we'll spend maybe five minutes at the end because mm -hmm. that one is needed for Sunday session. Okay, oh. SQL Server. So as long as you have Postman and SOAP UI installed, the installation is very straightforward. Uh, once you download it, uh, you just simply double click it and just accept uh, everything, what your license agreement and click next, next, next. You don't have to change anything in any of those. The Postman and SOAP UI should install just fine. Yeah, you both that be... both uh, I got installed, but uh, I couldn't able to install the SQL. Yes, yes. So just come on Saturday. We'll see what's the issue, and uh, uh, or, or if you want to share here at the at the end, uh, we can do that. But is does everybody have it? <laughs> Are you guys able to install? Um, I did download and I installed uh, a bit of it, but I think uh, the SQL Server 2019 uh, Express Edition, I think it says installation has completed successfully, but I think at the bottom I see, which also says install SSMS. I didn't understand what is that. That's fine, uh, but you, you just need to click next, next, next. I think select the basic for that. Yes, yes, um, I Yep, and I think uh, you should be good uh, with that. So we'll we'll check on uh, Saturday at at the end uh, and see if you guys have it. Okay. So, but it's not required for Saturday. It is for Sunday. Um, anybody has not installed, we can uh, go through the installation here uh, if you guys need those two postmen and SOAP UI. So I have a Mac and uh, 
I downloaded the SOAP UI and uh, Postman. Okay. So then, what then should it will be fine. You just install it. Uh, now, mm -hmm. for Postman, you need to find a Mac version. I think they have it. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I did it on Mac version only. Right, right. Yeah. Then, then you just install it. Just double click. The, and yeah. the, I don't know how you install on Mac, but uh, just double click on it and it uh, should be mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I did it that. But what should I do for SQL then? Uh, unfortunately, SQL. Uh, there is, there is a laptop. version yeah. for SQL, but it's very complicated, and you need a yeah. whole bunch of other security privileges. Yes. Okay. So I would recommend not try to do that. Just use it on the Windows machine, or uh, just focus on see if you can alternate place to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So on Sunday we need the SQL, no? Um, yes, so we will spend some time on it uh, Sunday, either Sunday if we have time, otherwise uh, during next Thursday's lab, uh, okay. we'll let you guys work through some exercise. So you still have some time, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, but as long as you guys have other two software, I think we should be good for Saturday. Hi. Roger, uh, Charlotte, uh, have you guys installed? Yes, Bhumika, go ahead. I have downloaded, but when I double click on the application, it's uh, asking me to get apps from store. Uh, yes, I just said uh, it's a Microsoft. Uh, you have probably Windows 11 um, on your machine. So just uh, if you want to share something here quickly, we can we can just so that other folks have, might have the same issue. Sure, and, I can share the screen. Yeah, yeah, just share the screen, double click on it, and we'll just work through it. Okay, wait, um, hold on. Make sure you share the desktop, okay? Enter Not screen. specific application. It's just entire screen, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you already downloaded, right? Yeah, okay. I downloaded, but when yep, you double yep. click on it. Yep, it's there you go. Uh, click on get apps from store. Okay. This is Windows S. Okay, Windows S mode. All right, it will not let you install anything uh, outside the uh, yeah Windows the uh, store. S. Okay, so you need to get out of the Windows S mode. Okay, so how? <laughs> I don't know how to get yeah. out uh, from the Windows S. Mode. We just need to Google through it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep, yep. And then after that, I can download it. You should be able to install it because you already have downloaded, right? Okay, installing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm going to so paste for, a link so... here. Okay. Um, so that you can just go through it and you should be able to turn it off. Okay. Can I do the stop sharing now? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Roger, you had something you were saying? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to download SOP. And it's telling me that I don't have the administ administrator privileges to install this program. Yeah. Uh, are you administrator on the account that you log into your laptop? Yes. And it's a Windows machine? Yes. Should allow you to do that. Roger, mm -hmm. if you want to share your screen, we, we can quickly take a look at it here. Oh, and see what well, issue you are facing. Well, okay. Make sure you share the desktop, complete desktop. Windows 10. Windows 10 in S mode. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's a 10 or 11, both will work fine. Yep. So where is it? Yeah, you can switch to Windows 10 home. Uh, okay. Yeah. The secure mode essentially prevents you from downloading anything. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, so where is it? That is what it is. I mean, those who have already installed a couple of things, if you guys want to drop, feel free to drop. Okay. We'll work through the installation part, remaining 20 minutes uh, and so forth. Yeah. And we'll see everybody at like it's around 845 on Saturday. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yes, Rohini, go ahead. I well, need Roger is with, uh, uh, micro, uh, win, uh, equal server. Those two. Okay. And uh, Postman, I have it, but these two so, UI. things, downloading uh, is a problem. So I have a question. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay. All right. So wh what are you trying to 
Okay, I, I think we need to see the complete screen. Roger. Is that is this what yeah, can you this say? is the whole screen, yeah. So yeah, Roger, this is the whole screen, yeah. It, it it tells you that you don't have administrative privilege. Are you sure you have admin privilege on this machine? Um well, one thing you can do, click on okay. Uh, let's try one more thing. Okay, click okay. Okay. Now right click on the file. You see open file, right click on it. No, for which are file you are running, right? File so PI, go go the one, one more above. One more above. Yeah. Right click on it, right click on it. I did. Uh, go in a show in a folder. Okay. No, Harshal, if they have turned off that. Yeah, so right now click right on click it. on it. Right click on it again. And say run as administrator. Run as admin mode. Yep, yep. Now run as administrator. See if it lets you do it. If you have uh, authority, it should allow you to elevate yeah. the privilege and do but, that. Do you see what it's saying? No, we can't. No, we're not that, seeing uh, it. Okay, because it's telling me, do you want to allow this app? To yes. Make yes, yes. Then just yes. click yes. You got to say yes. Okay. There, yep, you, there go. you go. So it's installing. So it's, it's good. Okay. Uh, second one, you have to install the same way. Okay. And uh, yep. you should be next. fine. Then I go yeah, next, just right? Next, next, yep. next. Next. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, go back, go back, go back. Uh, you got to go back. How because you did not have. I don't think I'll be able to go back. Cancel. Okay, run, cancel and run it again. To exit. See now go back. Email. Run as admin. I think Herschel, that was just the documentation you wanted to install for tutorial. Uh, no, that was SOAP UI box on chat. So I just want to make okay. sure if you checked. By default, it should be checked, right? Yeah, it, it is. Like, yes. Okay, see, this. Okay, see, no, no. Checked. So, if it's yes. a grade, it's only the documentation. All right, okay. So, go ahead and do the next. Yep, yep. You should be good. Yeah, just click next, 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 and you are yeah. fine. All right. Yeah. Okay, you can stop sharing. Um, yes, Rohini, go ahead and share your screen, see what you have. So this is what can you see my yes yes so, but why do you need you are signing you have failed network error so open this in a chrome okay open this uh, email uh, the link that i sent you in a chrome try to click it in the chrome chrome browser she's in the chrome looks oh no she's on the edge no I'm yeah not... yeah so go in the chrome open the email log in in the email yep or yep this is yep, the one... copy it Yes, yes, copy it. Yep. Copy the old link and open in the Chrome window. Paste it. Yeah, just paste anywhere yeah, in the URL. It's fine. Just open another tab, Rohini. You don't have to get out of anything. Just, just do a plus. Click on plus. Click on plus at the top, another tab. Rohini. You don't have to do anything. Just click on plus another tab. Yeah, because uh, the screen is. Keep going. Keep no no go. go not the, you're in the search. Go. That. Um. There is a plus sign after the two tabs, right? You're active on the first tab. Go to the second tab. Right next to it, there is a plus sign, not the X sign. Yeah. No. So just open another tab, right, Roini? Uh, another window uh, tab uh, in the browser. Okay, okay give me control. Uh, just, just give me control. Let me just show you quickly. That's okay. Now, yep, now just yep, paste okay. it here. Yeah, good, good. Okay, just paste it. All right. Okay, it is downloading, Roini. Okay, so just wait uh, till the download is complete. And now of another 20 seconds. I is that something to do with the pop-ups or something? Yeah, no, no. you might have well, it, it depends. It's a security thing as well. That. Yeah, it's probably the I have the same thing on my machine. I have to go to the Chrome and uh, install or download it. Oh yeah. Okay. So it failed twice three times. Uh, that's I, fine. That's fine. Okay. I think you're good. Let's see. Yep. 
So this is, then I can click and then install it, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so then, now double click on it. Default installation. Default installation. Okay, you don't have to do anything with this one. Just uh, open window. Okay. Yeah. Once I, it I'm... opens the folder, just double click on it. Yep. You don't have to change anything. Just click next, 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 and uh, you should be good. Go to downloads and see if it's there. Yep, yeah. It be there. Double click. You run as admin. And just double no, click. Just double click. You don't need to. Okay. It will take maybe a few seconds to load up. Okay. Yeah, because it's 636 megs, so yeah. it will be yeah. zipped and extracted first. Yeah, it might take a minute or two to open up actually the so, dialog box. Um, <laughs> after this is done, uh, I need to download uh, SQL Server. SQL Server and then install it, right? Yes. Yep. yes. I think I can do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop. Uh, For SQL Server, just use the basic installation. You don't need anything mm -hmm. fancy. Don't need to change anything. Just click next, next, next. Okay, yeah. thank you. All I'm right. going to stop share. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, uh, other folks, uh, you guys have it. Uh, Olma, Maya, um, Bhumika, Jaisri, all of you. I didn't install yet. I have to install. Okay, so make sure you- I have did both, but I don't have a SQL. I will try the SQL. Okay, so you just saw it, right? Uh, how she did yeah. it? Uh, just a simple installation. There is nothing fancy. In SQL, so I need to go to the basic, right? Basic. Yes, one. yes, just basic. Okay. That's the only part you need to select. Uh, but I think okay. it's already selected by default. Just verify it, and then you click next. next. Okay. Okay. Uh, so okay. you can drop. I mean, just if you want. Okay. okay. If you have everything uh, up and running. Okay. Thank you. All right, I Anjali. I uh, them already. You already downloaded. Uh, yes. Charlotte. Okay. Yes. And did you install uh, the software? Yeah, I yeah. did. Okay. All right. Then then you are good. Uh, then uh, you can drop as well. So we have to install all what you send it? Yes. Yes. That is correct. Okay. Yep. One by one in the same order. Just install one by one. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple process. Uh, there is nothing, no changes required. So just click next, next, accept li license agreement and so forth. And uh, make sure oh. you have it up and running on for Saturday and so forth. Okay. All right. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, you, you can drop as well. Um, Bhuvika, do yes, you have I'm, everything? I'm trying to get out of the S mode, but- Oh, uh, yes, yes, okay, okay, gotcha. Okay, Yeah. stick around for five minutes. Let me just check with everybody. Olma, do you have everything? Sure. Um, Nicole, yeah, Um, I did not download it but I'll do it. Uh, I've been listening and following everything that you guys are saying. Okay. Yep. Yep. I think it's very straightforward install. So you should be good as long as you download and install uh, afterwards. Uh, you should be fine. But just make sure you do it before Saturday though. Okay. I will. Saturday session. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Then you can drop as well. Uh, so Charlotte, you can drop. Uh, Anjali? Yes, I have installed it. You have installed and then you, you, can, you can drop. Uh, okay. You don't need to stick around. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Deepa, um, I think you are you are working to installation, right? So when you said to drop them, is just to open them? No, no, drop means I mean you can you can leave the class uh, session. Okay. We're gonna talk about installation only. We're not going to go through anything else. So yep. So Bhubika, uh, you can share your screen. Uh, let's let's see if we can get you out of S mode. Okay, so you are following that, right? S mode is there, okay. Uh, upgrade to upgrade, upgrade are available in S mode, activation state, active. Switch Windows 10 home or switch to go to the store. Okay, let's see. If you see an upgrade your addition Windows section, be careful not to click go to the store. Okay. Uh, this is Windows 10 or 11 that you have. Do you know?
Okay, so to install app that are very am I gonna get uh, okay, go open the store. Yep, click on open store. Yep, get yep. Okay, so it's asking you to sign in to your account. Do you have the account uh, that can sign you in? Are you logged in with the Windows uh, account or how are you logging into your computer? Uh, we, we can't hear you. I think you are on mute, so. I think Windows account. Okay, Windows account, uh, then you can just, uh, yeah, you have to log in with uh, whatever account you logged in with. Okay, like a computer, like initially? Yes, 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 that's correct. Okay, but uh, it's, it's asking for Microsoft account, so I don't have Microsoft account. Well, what are you logging in with on your computer? Uh, are you logging just in regular... with the email or just uh, your name? Uh, just my name. Okay. Uh... I think she is probably logging as local account. Make sure you have privilege to turn off the S mode. Otherwise you may have to actually log in in the Windows account, uh -huh. right, register right, right. your software, because it may not have registered your product. Mm. And that's why okay. it's not, uh, not enabling you to turn off the S mode. Okay. So to check with your uh, spouse, right? Um, and uh, see if he knows uh, uh, about the other account. Um, okay, sure, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, if, I'll let you know if I don't get it. Uh, yeah, then, then I'll get you a laptop, okay? Uh, otherwise, okay. Uh, just, just shoot me an email. I'll have uh, one laptop for you. Uh, okay, for sure. Saturday, otherwise. Okay? Okay, sure, thank you. All right, okay, yeah. sure. Uh, let's see who else is left here. Uh, Deepa, you here or you're gone already? Okay, looks like she's not uh, around. So I think Deep, we can close out the meeting then. Yep, okay. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, okay, see you. Thank you, see you guys on Saturday. Yep, yep. all right.